The creator of State Adapt, Mike Pearson, is one of the most passionate supporters of declarative code in Angular. Now, I probably don't need to give too much of an intro to declarative code for existing viewers of this channel. Uh, I'll link to some previous videos if you aren't familiar. But very briefly, the most important concepts to understand are that with declarative code, you can understand what something is and how it changes just by looking at its declaration. It is not imperatively changed after its declaration. And we generally have this architecture where we can visualize data flowing into the application from the top, and it follows this downward flow where everything automatically reacts to changes in the dependencies above it. This is where the reactive aspect comes into play. The reactions happen automatically. We don't need to manually update things like we would with imperative code. It all just happens by definition based on the thing's declaration. So state adapt, what is it? And more importantly, why is it? In short, it's Mike's attempt at creating a state management library that is as declarative as possible within reason. So let's just jump straight into an example of how it works. Uh, to test it out, I refactored the Quicklist application, which I have done about a hundred times in the past for other examples. I'll link to the source code if you want to check out the broader application, but we are mostly going to focus in on just one feature of this application to get a sense of what State Adapt is doing. Specifically, we are going to be focusing on this service, which manages checklist items, and also the component that makes use of this service. So there are sort of three key parts here. The first is our data sources, which is how data flows into the application. These data sources can just be regular observable streams, which is what this checklist items loaded stream is. Uh, this is what is responsible for loading the data. Or it can be one of these state adapt source streams, which is essentially the same as a subject that we can next. You might notice these extra strings we are supplying here. Uh, this integrates with Redux DevTools so we can easily see what data sources are being triggered and how they are changing the state when debugging. And we also pipe our normal observable stream with to source to add this information as well. So we have our data sources and then we have our store. This is what gives us access to the current state. But what is that state? Well, here we have the checklist item state. We give it its initial state and then we supply this adapter. So we'll look at the adapter in just a moment, but the adapter's role is basically to take the data emitted on our data sources and determine how that should change the state. If you are familiar with the Redux pattern, this should all sound reasonably familiar. It is similar in concept to actions and reduces. We hook up our data sources to the methods they should trigger in the adapter. When checklist items loaded emits a value, it should trigger load checklist items. When the add source emits a new value, it should trigger add in the adapter and so on. Then in the adapter, just like with a reducer, we take in the data from the data source along with our current state and determine how that event should change the state. We can also define selectors in our adapter for the streams of data we want to create from our state. Then what I am doing is using the streams from those selectors and converting them into signals that are exposed publicly on this service and then I can use those signals in my components. All my component gets in the end is a signal of the current state. The signals aspect here isn't really a part of state adapt. It is just how I am using the state from state adapt in Angular. And if our component needs to trigger changes like adding a new checklist item, it can just next the appropriate data source from the service. So isn't this basically just Redux or NGRX store or whatever? We have what are basically actions being listened to by what are basically reducers to produce state that we can access with selector streams. The key difference here centers around the importance of our data sources as the source of change and not utilizing callback functions that can contain imperative code. A core aspect of State Adapt's philosophy is to avoid, and I think Mike would advocate for entirely eliminating, callback functions. Notice in this component that there are no methods. If we look at the other smart component in this application, we will see it is the same deal. Whenever the user interacts with something in the template, rather than using a callback function, we have that action directly next a data source. The only function left here is the one in the effect that patches the form value. And as we can see from the comment left by Mike, this should ideally be eliminated too. I like how well this quote from one of Mike's articles sums up the benefit of the anti-callback method philosophy. The curly braces of functions that don't return anything are like open arms inviting imperative code. 
Callback methods make it easy to drop in imperative code. Directly nexting your data sources encourages you to be more declarative. For example, I was very clearly violating the declarative approach by making this imperative call in a callback. By having the remove method in the first place, it made it all too easy to sneak some imperative code in. So to make this more declarative, rather than having an imperative method to call clear checklist items as a side effect, the checklist being removed can just be a data source for both the checklist and checklist item adapter. The checklist adapter will get the event from the data source and remove the checklist. And the checklist item adapter will also get the event from the same data source and remove all of the checklist items associated with that checklist. If we want to delete a checklist, now we no longer require this remove callback method. We just call remove.next with the event directly from the template. So I'm really enjoying using state adapt so far, and I think it's likely that it will become the default state management library I reach for. The biggest problem it has right now is that it is not well known. It's a new library that was built and is currently being supported by Mike, so of course it comes with that open source maintenance risk. But that's the case with most new projects, and the way we can get any of the projects we like off the ground is to support them however we can. The 1.0 release of State Adapt has already been out for a while, and at this point Mike is mostly looking for help in the form of people using it and creating issues if they run into any problems. And even if you don't want to use State Adapt in production, a trying it out is a fantastic exercise in learning to code more declaratively. Alright, that's it for this one. Uh, if you found this interesting, I'd appreciate if you could show the video a bit of love, and I hope to catch you again for the next one.